Hi students, today in this video we will see persuasion as a supportive psychotherapy. We have learned in, uh, uh, in the process of counseling uh, that a lot of persuasion takes place in an indirect manner. But then here today we are here to learn about persuasion as one of the major supportive psychotherapeutic techniques. For when we hear this word persuasion, uh, what comes to our mind is giving direct suggestions or directly telling the client or another person uh, what to do, what not to do or uh, in a way pressurizing another person to do something which is not his or her original idea. So why then why this persuasion is used as a supportive psychotherapy it is because a lot of times and with uh, not with all clients indirect suggestions are the regular method of counseling works with all the aspects with few aspects the counselor has to tell or has to suggest the client to do something or not to do something or to get into certain behaviors or to complete the assignment or so some amount of pressure is required some amount of force is required with few clients so in that regard persuasion is used as one of the supportive psychotherapeutic techniques coming to the definition of persuasion as a supportive psychotherapeutic technique persuasion can be defined as the process by which communicator that is here the therapist attempts to convince a person that is the client or a group in, in when it comes to family or group therapy uh, here that is called as a group to change their attitude or behavior in regards to a particular issue by communicating a message in an atmosphere of free choice here initially i use the term we have to pressurize or we have to use the force when the therapist actually knows what's going to benefit the client or uh, what will help or what kind of change or modification in one's life or behavior would lead to uh, well-being in the client therapist has to communicate certain messages directly but then here in persuasion the client has the freedom to choose to take that suggestion or not but then attempt is made by the therapist in order to tell the client that this is the right thing for you to do or in order to make sure that you uh, feel well-being psychological well-being or subjective well-being this is the behavior that you need to follow or this is the change that need to happen in your life that will be told directly by the therapist to the person or the client or a group of people and that is called as persuasion. Simple, in simple words if I have to tell what persuasion is telling the client what to do or what not to do for his or her betterment but then here the client has all freedom to ch take that suggestion or to take that message or not and that is called as persuasion. So what is the principle behind persuasion to be used as a technique of supportive psychotherapy? Here uh, psychotherapists believe that patients have within themselves the power to modify their pathological emotional processes by force of sheer will or by the utilization of common sense means a lot of times we will not depend on someone else or a lot of people will not depend on others to overcome their personal difficulties or the emotional turmoil that they are going through but then sometimes it is necessary for another person or second person or third person to intrude in the process of healing but then the principle behind persuasion is that how much ever someone else or the therapist or the third person or the second person tells you to change your behavior or move towards well-being it is that ability is there or the power is there within the client 
to modify his pathological emotional processes means if the person has a will to change his behavior he or she can definitely change his or her behavior it requires will and also the person need to know what to do and that is called as utilization of common sense here when that person lacks that will or free will or um, when that person do not know what exactly to do that is common sense is lacking a bit in that case the therapist have to tell the client what he or she should do and that is called as persuasion coming to the process of persuasion when a suggestion is given when an advice is given to others very rarely others tend to practice that though for the one who is giving the advice it seems a very useful advice a very beneficial suggestion or helpful one but still it becomes difficult for the person who is receiving the advice or the suggestion to practice that because that is not his or her own thought but in the process of persuasion when it is used as a supportive psychotherapy a lot of time change has been observed in the client then how does that happen over a period of time uh, when the client is coming to the therapy the therapist tends to persuade the client in direct or indirect manner the first technique used in the process of persuasion is prolonged discussions the therapist need to know exactly what kind of persuasive message will be taken by the client and for that the therapist need to know the thought process of the client clearly because when when you are given direct suggestion you uh, a lot of times or 99% of the times you tend not to follow that suggestion though you know that it is good but then after a discussion if you uh, negotiate or if the therapist negotiate some behavior with the client then there are more chances that the client will follow or go according to the suggestion that was discussed during the discussion and uh, the second part of uh, uh, persuasion is symptoms are the product of emotional stress because when a suggestion is given or when the therapist is persuading directly communicating a message to the client then before that a lot of study has been uh, should have been done about the client about his or her emotional stressors as well as the experiences so whatever behavior or the symptoms that the uh, person or the patient is showing is a product of emotional stress that he or she had in his or her past or he or she is going through but then when when you think only about the symptoms they are not serious enough but then the causes for the symptoms are serious enough so when persuasive messages are given in terms of causes or in the process of persuasion you need to focus on not on the symptoms but on the causes for those emotional stress then the clients have a tendency to accept that and um, uh, even in the process of persuasion it is focused that the less you concentrate on the symptoms the less disturbing it would be for example if a person tends to uh, uh, have a recurrent thoughts of failure the more chance you give the more time you give to those thoughts those thoughts tend to influence your behavior in one or the other way so if you stop concentrating on those thoughts the thoughts of failure then you tend to become more or less disturbed because of those thoughts then how can it be done it can be done by focusing on more positive thoughts means when you are asked to reduce one thing then you need to know what to increase here if your thoughts are more about failures then in order to overcome that you need to have thoughts of winning and that would lead to less disturbance and then in the process of persuasion the 
next thing is it is necessary to stop thinking of pain and suffering and think more about well being or all the good things or positive things that you ha have in uh, your life that means as a client the person need to focus on the bright side rather than the dark side and these information are given directly by the therapist to the client with any major psychotherapy or if you are using gestalt therapy with gestalt therapy techniques even some amount of persuasion is also necessary to expect major change in the client's thinking pattern which will help him to move towards betterment and this is all about persuasion which is used as a supportive psychotherapy which is slightly different from suggestion it is a message given to the client by the therapist wherein the client has all freedom to take it or not thank you